okay yeah see one of the principles of faith which the lord jesus uh, talks about in mark chapter 11 right mark chapter 11 verse 22 have faith in god verse 23 for assuredly i say to you whoever says to this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart uh, but believes that those things he says will be done he will have whatever he says verse 24 therefore i say to you whatever thing you things you ask when you pray believe that you receive them and you will have them okay at the outset just wanted to say that um, you know this whole premise you know of faith and walking in faith and this thing of declaration you know is based on relationship first of all right it's not a formula okay it's based on intimacy with god it's based on relationship and from that place is is where we we pray from that place is when we declare in faith, speak out the words of faith. You know, that's the first thing for us to remember, right? And the second thing is that um, faith speaks, or in the sense, when you believe in your heart, and it has to be in alignment, or what we speak has to be in alignment with what we believe in our hearts, right? Because our words actually, um, I would say, betray what we actually believe in our hearts. And we might say one thing, you know, we might say that, yes, this is who I am, this is what I believe in, this is what I do. But when it comes to a pressure situation, what comes out of our heart uh, or what comes out of our mouth, the words that we speak, is what we actually believe, right? True, what we truly believe in. So, um, so that's what the Lord Jesus is addressing, is saying, you know, who was say, you know, have faith in God. And then he's talking about the words that we speak, the words that come out of our mouths. And then he's saying, you know, that the principle is this, this is how God is designed, this is how God has, um, you know, designed things to be that, that when we believe in our heart and when we declare with our mouth, that there will be change, right? And starting from the time we were born again, that's, that is how it is, right? When we believe, and, and the greatest change of all happened when we did that, right? We passed from death to life. And uh, so, if you have any doubt about, oh, does faith work, or you know, about speaking uh, in faith, and it seems like too much of a, you know, too much of a, um, you know, a thing that how, it, wishful thinking, and you know, how can I even, how can it happen? Just go back to salvation. This is how it was, right? We believed, we spoke, we we confessed, and uh, we passed from death to life, right? So, so that is that is what it is. So, um, so just to remind ourselves that. Uh, what we believe in our heart and what we confess with our mouth has to be in alignment. So uh, for us to remind ourselves and say, okay, uh, if there needs to be an adjustment, let me go back to God. Right? Let me go back to His Word. Let me spend time in His Word. Let me spend time in His presence and make that check and make that alignment in my heart right? so that the, the words that I speak also will be, will be in alignment with, um, in line with what I believe in. Right? Okay. So let's uh, let's just pray, Father. We even as we come before you this morning, Lord, we we draw near in faith, Lord. As your word says that when we draw near to you, Lord, uh, you draw near to us, Lord. And when you draw near, Father God, we experience your presence, we experience your touch, Father God. This morning, I pray that there will be this drawing near, Lord. And I pray, God, that uh, as we draw near in faith, Lord. That the words that we speak, Father God, the words that we declare out of our mouths, Lord, will be in alignment with the faith that we have in our hearts, Lord. And I just pray, God, that uh, Lord, if there needs to be uh, an, an aligning, Lord, in in our hearts, Father God, the, what we believe, Lord, and uh, Lord, and who we believe in, and the extent to which we believe, all that, Lord, I pray, uh, let there be change and let there be increase, Father God. And uh, Master, God, I pray that let your word change us. Let your word, Lord, nurture, or maybe be nurtured by your, the words that you speak of our God. And let faith rise in our hearts even today. Lord, faith for the impossible, God. Faith for the challenges that we might be f uh, facing, oh God. Faith for the breakthroughs that we might be, Lord, e uh, expecting, Father God. Lord, we pray, Lord, uh, let faith rise in our hearts, Master, even as we, Lord, receive your word, God. And I pray that the words that we re release will be faithful words, 
uh, the word declarations that we make, oh Father God, would be in alignment with your word, God. Uh, would, would be in alignment to the true nature of who you are, God. And uh, yeah, may we have breakthroughs. I just pray for a release of breakthroughs among us, Lord, personally, Lord, and uh, and as the families that we represent, Lord Master, we pray that may there be breakthroughs. May there be, Lord, the breakthroughs, Father God, for which we've been waiting for years, God. May there be breakthroughs. Let the barriers be broken down in the mighty name of Jesus. Even as we pray, Lord, we believe that we have received the things that we have prayed for so that we might see the manifestation of it, God. We thank you. We thank you that it's everything is based on our relationship with you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. You are our Heavenly Father. We thank you. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Oh yeah, thank you. That's good. Okay, so um, we are coming to the last few um, you know, topics in biblical preaching, and um, um, so we, today we're going to look at um, a few more things. Um, just want to remind us again to uh, to work on the sermon topics, sermon title. You know, uh, online students just fill up the Excel sheet so we can start. Um, I'll just give a date and then we can start, right? Um, okay, so we're looking at, um, uh, you know, what are some tips to e effective or confident speaking? Okay. I'll just go through a few of these. These are practical, you know, very practical things, um, not really chapter and verse, okay, by this person called Alan Morton. Um, first thing is preparation, of course. You know, if you're, when you are prepared, you are at peace, you are, confident, not confident to the point of not having any kind of, you know, slight nervousness or a little bit of anxiety, you know, how will it be received, you know, that kind of a thing is normal. And in fact, it's helpful, right, for us to be alert, uh, for our bodies to be alert, for our minds to be alert. Uh, so that that's even helpful. But um, not preparing um, unless, you know, it's it's like an it's like an emergency, or you put on a spot, and there is a need, and somebody says, you know, please share a word, and then you know, not coming prepared, uh, it, it actually puts us in a place of uh, disadvantage, right? And also, again, preparation. You know, sometimes when we have those emergency kind of situations, you know, God's grace covers it, right? God, God's grace covers it. God's grace empowers us. Uh, the Spirit of God empowers us, gives us inspiration, and so on. All that is there. Um, and when we say preparation, it's not just the content, but it's also mainly the heart, right? Because Proverbs very clearly declares the preparations of the heart belong to belong to man, right? But the answer of the tongue comes from the Lord, right? Preparations of the heart. Huh? Yeah, so, um, so the preparation of the heart is our responsibility, really, right? So... So that's the thing. Okay, so one is preparation, practice. Okay, so um, it's good to uh, you know as we start out, it's good to practice. Um, uh, you know, and then uh, uh, practice meaning just to speak, speak out, just to share. You know, uh, when we are not used to speaking publicly, when we hear our own voice, it sounds very strange. Right, and especially when you keep hearing it for like ten minutes, fifteen minutes, it sounds even stranger, right? Because you're you're not used to that, right? So practice helps. Um, practice, you know. Nowadays, you can even record it, play it back, listen to it, and see how it is. So practice helps. Um, okay, if there are mistakes, if there are goof ups, um, one thing is to persevere through that. Okay, which means don't give up. Just the first time, second time, third time, you know, don't give up, right? Uh, press through. I, I remember the first time, uh, public speaking in school, you know, the whole thing was a um, very different experience because, you know, you're so used to sitting at the desk and looking at one face, which is the face of the teacher, right? And two pairs of eyes, that's it. Suddenly I came forward. <laughs> And there were, I think that time we had about 55 to 60 students in the class. So you can imagine, right? So, you know, 59 pairs of eyes looking at me. And, uh, of course, throat went dry, nothing came out. You know, thoughts went, mind went blank and all that happened. So, yeah. So, so you, you know, the thing is, to when we prepare also, you know, to 
to just tell ourselves, hey, it's going to be, it's going to be like this. This is the view from here. This is how it's going to be, right? And yes, there could be mistakes, there could be goof ups, you know. So the thing is to persevere, you know, not give up, but you know, make those corrections and uh, persevere. So you know, TRI is a, it's a good acronym to work on. Take action, review, improve. Right? Take action, improve, uh, review, improve. To review is to think through. Okay, uh, could I have made it differently? Could I have spoken it differently? Uh, could I have explained it better? You know, should I? You know, uh, did I? Uh, did I make a mistake in sharing certain things? Um, all those things. You know, just to review. Okay. Right. We looked at sermon construction and we looked at the outline. Okay. Now all that is valid. Okay. But in our minds, you know, after we prepare the sermon outline, the introduction, the main points, um, the illustrations, etc., just in our minds to keep it, keep the whole format as as simple as this, which means that I'm going to tell the tell the congregation what I'm going to talk about. Right. I'm going to talk about it, and then I'm going to tell them what I have talked about. Okay, which means you summarize it, right? So. Introduction is okay. This is what we're going to talk about, and the main body is what you are actually talking about. And at the end, summarizing, uh, you know, a summary or review of it is okay. This is what we studied just now. This is what we looked at. So, in our minds, if we keep it, you know, it's so simple and clear, right? Uh, so it's not really cluttered up. Uh, public speaking again is, um, you know, it's it could be something that people. Okay, some people might say I don't like it at all. I I don't enjoy it. But uh, once they do that, then they realize that hey, this is this is something that I like. This is something sharing, especially sharing the truth uh, of scripture is something that I enjoy doing. Right. So it is a pleasurable experience. Right. And um, our personality, who we are, comes through when we share. Okay. Uh, we could be very serious. We could be very research oriented. We could be, you know, people who really get to the uh, depth of things, asking questions, uh, etc. So, our really our personality comes through when we share. Right? We could be funny. We could be serious. Whatever it comes through, and there's nothing wrong in it. Right? There's nothing wrong in it because um, God's word doesn't get diluted by man's personality because god ordained that the truth of scripture be shared through through the through humans right through human beings right and it, it tells jeremiah you know i put my words in your mouth and you speak it so jeremiah had a personality like he was called as the weeping prophet right so he would he would uh, you know be moved stirred up moved by the, the 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 whole surrounding and situations and so on, uh, but God chose to spoke uh, chose to speak through you know His personality as well, right? Okay. Yeah. So this is something that uh, the seventh one projection is something that we can uh, practice in the sense as part of our preparation to visualize. Okay, this is how it will be when I go up front and look at the audience. Right. This is how it's going to look, and this is how I'm going to speak. Right. You, you play it in your mind. This is how I'm going to speak, and uh, this is how I'm going to stand. This is how you know I'm going to sound like, and uh, you know I will I will do this. Right. So it becomes um, uh, you become even more confident. Right. See, we we don't want to be proud, right? But we definitely have to be confident. Right. The message is worth. Being confident about, right? Because Paul says, uh, you know, this is it. Uh, you know, in, in uh, First Corinthians or Second Corinthians, he talks about that. He has made us all sufficient, and for this thing, we are confident as ministers of God, because the sufficiency comes from Him, right? So, um, we it's it's good that we deal with all those things that hit at our confidence, that undermine our confidence. Okay. Um, so be strong in your identity, um, go for it, and be passionate about it, right? Um, if you're not passionate about the message, uh, what you're sharing, then I think we need to deal with it. Okay, why is it? It's 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 it seems a bit boring, 
right right through you, you realize that oh it's, it's a bit boring why is it is it because i've not really come to terms with it i've not uh, you know internalized it or i don't believe in it right all those things are there right um so you know think about it be passionate in your in your communication right um so as you reflect as we improve you will also make progress right that's the thing and perfection uh, we be begin to perfect how we are preaching how we are sharing it okay, that's a few practical things but i, I really like to uh, you know go into this next section which is keys to effective preaching okay so the first thing is really to pray that's the starting point pray receive from god pray prepare our hearts many times you don't feel like you don't feel like preaching okay at the place where you are because uh because of things that are happening around because of challenges because of uh, you know because of uh, situations whatever is there you know so all that seems to affect us influence us so we're not like we don't feel like preaching or whatever kind of ministry right we don't feel like sharing we don't feel like leading but we need to come to that place of being ready right so many times sunday morning just going there and i'm like i gosh i i wish someone else would preach today <laughs> i i wish i could oh i wish someone else would lead worship today so i have to lead worship and pray and preach so i wish someone would do you know either of that you know um sometimes i think and then and then just quickly make that adjustment no 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 you know i'm a child of god you know i'm a minister of <laughs> minister of christ and uh, a channel of his blessing to many people you know the our declaration it really uh, helps you know i just i do that uh, and i say you know i'm a channel of his blessing to many people so and when we declare that uh, and we make such faithful declarations it changes uh, temperamentally we are changed physically even you know there's a lot of strength okay um so pray uh, the lord will give illumination the lord will give uh, inspiration you will be so surprised what the lord can put into our hearts right because um it's from him the truth you know he just just flows out of him and he knows the situation he knows the people better than ourselves right so depend on him for utterance uh, depend on him for uh, the lord to prepare the hearts of the people right so so that's the thing many times um, you know we um yeah the people come and then we find that it's a struggle struggle to relate struggle to connect right so pray that the hearts of the people will also be prepared uh, they also go through challenges like this last sunday just day before today uh, one of the worship team members like i didn't know like we came we, we did everything and when we were doing the review found out that her child was actually the whole night uh, was unwell fever and whatever and so uh, and in the morning she came to church she was tired and also not emotionally not in a place to sing right but then that time of prayer that we had just before going into worship she said that really helped her and then lifted all those burdens off and and so on so yeah so pray for you know if there's a team if there's an audience pray for them uh, pray that the lord will uh, move prepare deal with the certain things okay we can also pray for protection the lord's protection over our hearts over our minds okay um from being distracted and from all those distracting thoughts and um an accusation from the enemy okay so you realize that only when you're getting ready for a ministry you know uh, time like preaching or maybe leading or or whatever it is you get all these distraction you get all these distracting thoughts you get all these accusing thoughts even right um i think i've shared right i just go and stand in front of the mic and then uh suddenly this thought comes hey did i switch off the stove you know i boy i was boiling the milk but did i switch off the stove did i switch off the geyser you know did i lock the car you know all these thoughts come and then uh, i i just decided okay it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if the car is not there it doesn't matter if the geyser is you know burnt out it does not matter i'll deal with it after this 
right? So my mind is going to be focused on what is at hand. Uh, I'll deal with all these other things later after this is done. So, but once I made that decision, I suddenly realized that these thoughts are not coming there anymore, <laughs> right? So yeah, so pray for protection and also prepare for you know all these kind of things. Anticipate and prayerfully reject Satan's accusation. Okay. Um, okay. I think the second thing we saw, right? Whatever we are stating, whatever instruction or points we are stating as a, a sermon point, I right, back it up with scripture. Okay. When we say back it up with scripture, we're saying, okay, let it be based on the word of God, right? Let it have a strong base because the word of God has eternal value. So whatever ideas that we are sharing, unless it's an opinion, okay, if it's, if it's an opinion, we can say, okay, this is this is just my opinion, my idea, you know, my suggestion. But if it's the eternal truth of God's word that we are sharing, then we can draw attention to where it's written, and so people can also see it for themselves, you know, or maybe put it on the screen. So see it for themselves; they can read it for themselves, and be convinced, convicted, because it's the eternal truth of God's word. Because you know, we would have left after the message, right? But what remains with the others is the Word of God, right? Which the Holy Spirit will continue to work on. You have just sown the seed of God's Word, right? So, yeah, so back it up with Scripture. Okay? Otherwise, it could be presumptuous, it could be opinions, and um, yeah, so do that. If possible, include humor, because especially when it's humor meaning, you know, Maybe a joke or two. Don't fill it with too many funny things. But uh, you know, then people will laugh at the joke, enjoy the joke, but forget why you cracked that joke. You know, it was. <laughs> you know, it was. Uh, sometimes we do that, right? We see the ad, nice ad, but what what product was it? What service was it? You know, we, it doesn't. Uh, we don't recall that. So we don't want that to happen, right? Um, so yeah. So if it is your personality, you know. Be fu funny in that, you know. If it's your personality to be funny in a very, uh, I don't know, very bubbly manner, very extravagant manner, extroverted manner, do that. If you want to be funny in a very quiet way, you know, that's how you are. That's how you talk. Be that. So don't try to be something else or someone else, right? So that's the thing. Then it will actually backfire. Okay. Okay. Fourth one is to uh, taste ourselves. So what do we mean by that? And I'm sure, you know, as we, you know, as we, um, the first few times when we when we shared the word, we realized that you, know, you had some five points, but you spent a lot of time on the first point because you liked it so much, <laughs> right? You just wanted to explain it and then you wanted people to get it and you, you loved it yourself. So you spent, you know, so much time on that first point, then suddenly you realize, hey, there's four more points and you just had to rush through. You know, just mention it and you know, rush through or just read it out and go through and say, Yeah, I really don't have much time, right? So, plan that. See, uh, yes, it is possible that even as we're preaching, we feel the weight of the Spirit's prompting to stay on something, to emphasize something, right? You realize that, okay, um, God wants, you know, there is a need in the congregation for this to really be, you know, given weightage. There's a need there. Um, maybe there's one, just one person, but then there's a need there. So stay there, go with the flow, and maybe there are certain things which you could just mention and go on. But be aware of that, mindful of that. You know, let it be uh, a sensitive thing that you're led through, rather than you know that you're not even thinking about it, and then you know you've stayed somewhere and you wasted time, and uh, suddenly you have to rush. Okay, so plan on uh, uh, pace yourself. Um, your rate of speech, you know, etc. Okay, right. Any uh, any questions? Yeah, Francis. So, Pastor, while preparing the message, like if we prepare a message, it's for one person. We can use that. We can preach the same message in another venue or another meeting. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then if you, 
if you feel that that's relevant and and many times it will be so you know you prepared you're teaching something and uh, yeah um, maybe it's the same same audience right maybe you prepared you've shared something and then maybe 6 months down the line 9 months down the line you know you, you want to maybe share that again reiterate it again and kind of build on it right so yeah by all means and maybe there are some certain uh, certain things that that are added to what you or you want to add on to what you share that's also fine or it could be you know different audiences different congregations and this is something that you know the lord wants to emphasize um or this is the only message you have <laughs> Just go ahead do it in a prayerful way and it will be a blessing so yeah so that's the thing so let it not be for want of preparation you know I, i'm not prepared anything this is only uh, this is the only thing i have so let me do it i mean it can happen once or twice but then uh, let it not be for want of preparation but definitely we can repeat a certain message right okay someone else's message they're doing <laughs> so uh what someone has prepared what someone has preached and it... right 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 yeah you can you can as long see it has impacted you right and so you know it can be a blessing to people like for example there's this illustration which is highly impactful for me this is by um i think it's um uh man i forget the name of the person um um okay i'm not getting the name but then he he gives this illustration okay he he talks about going to a art museum and looking at a picture okay and this this you can a painting go to yours to a gallery so an art gallery sees the painting the painting is two chess pieces right two chess pieces there and the title is checkmate so this person is actually a chess grandmaster he goes there he sees that and then he says checkmate is what the final move right in, che in chess checkmate is that's it the, the king does not have any other option but in the game that's it so it says checkmate and that was the move that king there and then the other piece there whatever but then he looks at it long enough and he says hey the king has another move he studies the chess board he looks at it and he says you know the king has another move and so the, he talks about that to this audience and he says the king has another move in your life you know you might think it's checkmate it's over game over but the king has another move in your life <laughs> so i mean that stayed with me right for a long time it just stayed with me and uh, i used it many places we used it <laughs> and people you know kind of testified and said hey that's a that's such a blessing i because this guy was really at the end of the line uh it was the last few days of the year he had actually uh, uh lost a job um a lot of things happening you know is trying to get married and then like coming here you know all those things are there lost a job so he didn't know what to do and he was sitting in that position it was between christmas and new year right last few days of the year and then and then he heard this and he said um, he went back and then he like got a job i think then after that he came and testified saying you know that was really a blessing so by all means <laughs> reuse uh, whatever has blessed you um, you know and i'm sure that lord will give additional insight right to whatever you've heard how it has impacted you uh, could be different so you know that could be an additional insight as well okay so how long should your me message be <laughs> short and sweet short and short messages are very difficult if it's you know 5 minutes 10 minutes see whatever message you're preparing is 10 minutes it's difficult right because you can have a very you know long conversation you can just go on 40 minutes you know go for a walk everywhere you can talk about look at the trees etc it's fine but then if you want to make you know very uh, succinct points it's going to be challenging so that's the thing think about it but sometimes it's it's all you have like 15 minutes is all you have 10 minutes might, might be all you have so it's it's good to prepare ahead and uh, just state it right 
uh, and state state choose your words carefully um, and and see how it can make maximum impact right uh, sometimes you don't have to be long drawn just state it you know and then uh, you can like people normally say 20 minutes is what uh, the full attention maximum attention that people can give okay 20 minutes um, there's there are a lot of things that are de depend based based on that. Like you, I, I don't know if you heard of the Promodor method of st uh, working or studying, which is like every 20 minutes you take a break for five minutes, every 20, 20 minutes. You know, so they say 20 minutes, but you know you can't always just uh, you know let's say you're doing a study, you're doing a, you know, a typical Sunday sermon. People have come, right? It's it's the only day for really studying and together as a congregation so uh we might have you know maybe an hour so the thing is every 20 minutes see that there is a transition okay so there can be a pause there can be a, a change a transition into something else so if it's if it's one hour you know it's like three sections right you break it up make sure that 20 minutes there is a transition or in 15 minutes there is a transition right maybe an illustration uh, something that will bring the attention back you can think about it right um okay eye contact how important is it look into the eyes of the so what happens if there's no you know, if you're not looking at the congregation or you're looking at your audience, huh? we won't know whether they're listening. That's one thing. Mm, they may or may not listen, right? That's the thing. So, so eye contact, you know, enables us to relate to people. It builds a bridge, builds a connection, right? Uh, so, eye contact is good, right? And like I said. There could be certain cultures which feel challenged when you look into their eyes, right? So be mindful of that. Um, like maybe they feel they maybe they turn their eyes away. So don't be put off by that, right? See when you're when you're there upfront ministering, you're there as a spiritual leader or as a representative. So you know they look up to you as a leader, and that's fine. So maybe in the in the cultures. They may not reciprocate with direct eye contact. Be mindful of that. And uh, it's fine, right? So let it not uh, trouble you. Let it not throw you out, right? OK, voice. How should your voice be? How, large, how loud should it be? How soft should it be? OK, should it be loud throughout? That you're you know, going bang, bang, bang. Uh, <laughs> Uh, see, the loudness of a voice is good. It should, be, I mean, for audibility, uh, so that it's audible. Like right? the last person, the furthest away, they get to hear. It's audible for them. Right? If it's if it's too loud, it's a problem. Right? It can weary the people. Tired people get tired if it's too loud. Um, you know, one of the methods of torture, right, in the prisons. <laughs> In order to get the truth out of prisoners, you know, prisoners of war is loud, very loud sirens and music incessantly, you know, just blaring. It just does something, it breaks down the will of the person. So, you know, so we need to be mindful, right? Let it not be loud throughout. And then it's, it's, um, it, it's like people are in pain, actually. But at the same time, if it's too soft, it's a strain. To people, you know, what did he say? What did she say? You know, this is asking. I missed that. What did they say? Right. So let it be uh, not too loud, not too soft, and also if uh, voice, if what we are sharing, it's going to be in a monotone. What does monotone mean? It means same, same, maybe same volume, same pitch, same tone. Right. It's not going up. It's not going down. Right? It's the same. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, same note. It's like the pads, <laughs> worship pads. Um, yeah, same, same note. You know, just saying, yeah, good morning, everyone. I'm glad to be here today, and uh, uh, so good. And we are 
you know, studying by biblical preaching. Uh, initially, you'll be curious. Oh, what what is this? Hey, it's nice way of speaking. And then suddenly, you'll feel like your eyes are closing as you're listening. Okay, it's nice. I just feel like a lullaby, <laughs> so soothing, <laughs> and you want to close your eyes. So, uh, what happens is uh, there's a lapse in attention in people when they hear a monotone. Like um, I think I've shared the story. I, I forget where I've shared, but um, I remember once after a Sunday service, this person came. Uh, came up to me and said, Pastor, that was nice content. I liked it. But can you alter your voice? You know, you were, say, you were saying the same thing like this. And uh, I felt very sleepy. He was, he was very, you know, he was very direct. And I'm glad that he was direct enough to say that, you know, after the service, he came and said, you know, I was feeling very sleepy. So, uh, thing. Uh, and then he felt very bad that he said that. I'm sorry, Pastor. I, I didn't mean, but I just wanted to say it. And I apologize, etc. And I said, no, 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 thanks. Thanks for, you know, giving such a direct feedback, uh, helpful. I'll try to change. You know, I'll try to. So, yeah. So, uh, so this will help, right? Our voice. It's a, it's important thing, you know, because you're communicating. It's like tuning an instrument, right? It's like being effective. That's it. Um, the downside of it is that we can use all these things that we're talking about, either to communicate effectively or to manipulate, right? So we should be mindful. Am I manipulating people? What is manipulating? You want the desired reaction. You've already decided, you know, I want to make people cry today, <laughs> right? So you're, you know, you're just doing everything and your voice is also, you know, and you're, you're also, you know, crying. And see, that's that's the thing. If you, you, We should not manipulate. You don't want to manipulate that. Right. You you communicate right whatever reaction um, that whatever the content of what you are uh, communicating definitely will elicit a response right uh, it could be a response where people are saying I I don't believe in that or maybe they're stirred up they're angry or people can you know it witnesses to their heart and they are in agreement so that's a response or people are moved right so all these responses are possible but you don't manipulate it. Okay, it's very, very important, right? Um, uh, yeah, especially if you're very influential and, and all that, do not manipulate, you know, things like, I want to, I want people to contribute more. I want people to, you know, the offering, you know, all that. Because unfortunately, people do that in ministry, in churches, circle, etc. So, yeah. Okay. Um, question? Okay. When we are, when when there is an emotional uh, talking and all in between, some pastors used to cry. I mean, it's not intentionally, but it will come. The tears will come, and uh, some pastors intentionally also they do. I saw so many pastors in our side also. They'll preach every sermon. They'll cry. Is that a manipulating or is it... Only that person can say, actually. <laughs> Sometimes it happens to me. In the sense, you know, I get choked up. I'm not able to share. I'm stuck. And then uh, that happens. So so it, it is, it, it, it's true. It can happen. Uh, and like you said, you know, when they're saying something and then intentionally if they are doing that, then it's not good. Like we don't know. Uh, we can think like it's it's their style of preaching. Let mm. pastor will cry, the whole congregation will <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's a style, but it's not a healthy thing, right? It's a, maybe it's a style they don't even realize it. Maybe it's a conditioned response from the congregation, you know. But um, yeah, so yeah, all those unhealthy things are all part of that so so we don't want that you know it's not that you know uh, there should not be any emotions that's not uh, god has created us to be people emotional people you know emotions of joy emotions of you know like excitement about something and also you know to be moved to to cry uh, to be yeah cr crying not from a point of sadness but even the fact that you know you experience the presence of god so you know so all that is possible yeah but when it's done in a manner 
to get a reaction, to move a congregation, then it becomes a manipulation. So, yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Mm. Yeah, it's embarrassing in the sense, see, even for the congregation, let's say the person is very disconnected from the message that you're sharing, okay, very disconnected, and then you are moved personally, and they are unmoved. They're like, why is this person getting so emotional about, you know, something, something so simple? Like, for example, I'll just tell you, one Sunday morning, um, all our outreach pastors had come. Um, so, um, yeah, I think, the, it's, is it on? Yeah, it's on. Okay. You know, it's... Sorry. Okay. Um, so, one Sunday morning, our outreach pastors had come, and uh, they were visiting uh, South location, and then we said, okay, uh, let's let's just call them forward and pray. So, uh, just call them forward, and uh, some of them were there. I think maybe five or six of them, so called them forward, and then started to pray. Yeah, and I, as I started to pray, I just started crying, right? Uh, and I just couldn't go beyond the thing. First, I had to really wait, control, uh, you know, myself, and then I had to do it. So, you know, it just became a very spontaneous thing. There's nothing about the people or the prayer, whatever, that needed that kind of a thing. So people were all thinking, you know, what is wrong, right? Why is he crying? Why? But I just felt, I don't know, one is, one is the strong presence of God. And I was just moved by the fact that, you know, just looking at them, these were all different people, different places, the ministry. I don't know. It was a combination of all that. So people can be disconnected. They might be wondering, you know, why is he so... But then you as a person, you might be going through a lot. Right, uh, you might be going through in the same not difficult things, but then um, you know maybe God is dealing with you, maybe God is doing something. All that happens. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. Oops. Sorry. Okay. Um. Okay. Gestures, posture, body language. Okay. Now this is something that uh, others can actually give feedback about. Okay. Um, so we can be see normally as a as a as a person, as people, when we talk, we talk with a lot of gestures, yes or no. Right. Maybe if, if you know if you if you ask you to just sit like that and talk to the other person about about your life, various things, you will still maybe shrug, you will you there will be gestures that come across as a natural response to what you're saying okay so the thing is to be that when you're sharing your natural gestures to be free enough to uh, to communicate with those gestures but the problem is some gestures can be distracting right maybe a person is uh, constantly i don't know maybe scratching the face every time okay okay then it's a distraction Right? Maybe you're doing that, or maybe you're checking your pockets, something like that. Or you're fidgeting with, maybe you're wearing a tie, you're fidgeting with your button, and you know, then people notice that and people get distracted. So we can say, okay, you know, just like I, I'm just talking about myself because these are corrections that I made, right? So I had this problem of uh, tilting the pulpit. <laughs> okay, so everything is there. So I just, you know, lean on the pulpit and tilt it. So you know, my family, my wife and daughter, they said, please don't do it. You don't know when it'll fall. We're just thinking, you know, maybe he's going to tip it over. You know, don't do that. <laughs> right. So, so things like that. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, just one last thing, and then we'll see. Never disqualify yourself as a uh, as a as a preacher, as someone who is bringing, you know, we say, you know, uh, I don't know, I didn't prepare. I'm just coming. I'm just saying something. I hope you are blessed. Don't say that. Or, you know, I don't have much to say. Uh, I just have very simple things, but I I don't know how you how you'll take it. You know, don't say that, right? 
um, so don't put yourself down. Oh, you can you can say, no, I don't have much experience in preaching, but still I'm coming. No, you know, you're there. You've been given an opportunity. Just share. Yeah, use it. Just share. You don't have to just say a lot of things about yourself, how great you are, how wonderful you are. Nothing. You just go, go ahead, speak. Right. So, um, yeah. So don't disqualify yourself or the content of your message. You know, like um, sometimes we disqualify. What are some ways by which we disqualify the content? We say, okay, this is just very simple. You might have heard it a thousand times, but uh, you know, listen to it again, or you know, things like that. Okay. 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 We'll continue in our next class. So eight things that we looked at. Okay. We'll stop here. Right. Okay. Thank you. God bless.